Hi there, this is Eric Keller for Ochoy. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the baking features that are part of the Octane integration into Unity. These features are still under development, so they are somewhat limited, but bear in mind that as we develop them further, uh, you'll see more functionality included in uh, updates of Octane for Unity. But let's take a look at where they stand right now and see how we can do some uh, baking in this scene that I have. So I've taken a scene here, or I've created a scene using some of the elements that are part of the docking bay example scene. So this large robot, a bunch of containers, some simple planes, and then I've created some lights using a capsule, 3D capsule, with some emissive red textures just to create this kind of effect on the floor. And I also have uh, a sphere with an emissive texture that's creating this blue light. And then I have a directional light that's uh, casting sort of sunlight from the top so you can see the sunlight here in the bottom. That's where that light is coming from. So within the hierarchy view, you can see I have a couple cameras. I have a main camera, which is my default camera, and then I've added another one just called camera that's providing us with this view right here that you see. So in order to bake lighting into textures, we need to uh, set up a baking camera. You can use any of the cameras that are already in the scene. I like to just create a new separate camera so I don't have to worry about moving it or or disturbing any of the views that I've already set up. So I'm just gonna go in here and choose Game Object Camera, and I'll just rename this Baking Camera. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the resolution for my scene so that I have something that's square, because right now this is more of a rectangular resolution. So I'll go into the PBR render target, and I'm gonna go down to the film settings, and let's set this to 1024 by 1024. So we have a square image now. And then I'm going to go to the camera settings and set this to custom and choose my camera. I'll choose baking camera. The baking camera is gonna be the origin, so we're gonna see kind of a weird look on the ground. We're just looking right down at the ground right now. That's obviously not what we wanna use for baking. In order to actually bake a texture, we need to set the camera type from thin lens to baking camera. So this is a type of camera. The next thing we need to do is set our baking group IDs so that they match our object. So I wanna just do a quick texture for the floor. So uh, let's select the floor and grab the floor here. Within the inspector, I'm gonna go down to the PBR instance property settings down here and I'm gonna set the baking group ID. So I'm gonna set this to something like three. And then I'm gonna to go to my PBR render target and I'm going to set the baking group ID to three as well so that they match. And then what we see is here's our floor. You can see the lighting on our floor, the shadows cast by our robot. This is the robot's feet right here and here's the shadow of the robot. And we can see our little lights that are appearing as well as the shadows created by the containers. And that's the texture we can apply to the floor. So when you're happy with the render, clearly you could save the image to disk using this icon right here and save it in these formats, or you can use the render to texture feature that is found in the PBR render target. So if I select PBR render target and go to the inspector, you can see up here, just below the render button, we have a menu called render to texture. So I'm going to press the create new button and let's call the texture floor baked. And you can see it appears right here. Now, if I make changes into the scene, of course, this texture is gonna update as long as I'm making changes to the scene. So uh, that could be a little bit tricky because you might like this texture, you might wanna keep it. So before I do anything else, I'm going to set this back to none you can see here is the floor baked texture right here. By setting this to none, then if I make changes in the scene, it won't disturb the texture that I've already baked out. So let's go into the project now. You can see here's our texture and I'm gonna create a new material and let's just call the material baked floor mat. I'm gonna drag this on top of the floor here. And in the inspector for the material, I could set the albedo to our texture. And let's turn off shaded wireframe. Let's go back to shaded. 
And you can see the results on the floor right here. So this is a standard Unity material. I could also set this to unlit texture so that the lighting in the scene isn't influencing the texture that's been baked onto the floor. But you can see there's the results right there. So we have a nice lighting on the floor and we can do the same for the other elements in the scene. So baking in Octane is nice and fast, uh, depending of course on how much GPU power you have to devote to it and the complexity of your scene. But a cool way to demonstrate this is to go to the PBR render target and under the render to texture setting, I'm going to create a new one. And let's just call this test. And I'm also going to create a new material. And let's call this test mat. And I'm going to put this onto the surface here. You can see when I change the material, you can see immediately we have a change here in our test texture. Let's go to the test mat and in the albedo, I'm going to set this to our test texture right here. And I'll take our light emitting sphere and just move it in the scene. And you can see after a couple of seconds, the light captures up to it because this lighting is actually being baked into the texture as I move the light around. Same thing happens when I move the floor lights here. You can see that texture update very quickly. This is even more obvious when I start to rotate around that uh, directional light that's above the scene. So that's actually the baked lighting on the floor, not the shadow cast by the robot in the scene, but the shadow cast being rendered in Octane and then reapplied to the texture that's part of the material. So that's pretty cool. So I baked out a few more textures and applied them to the containers and the walls in the scene so you can see the result. It's kind of neat because now I can get the benefits of Octane lighting and materials while looking at your scene in real time. So stay tuned as this feature is developed in future releases of Octane for Unity. And once again, thanks for watching.